jump to Revelation 18, 11. No, 
Senhor, para o Jesus Christ, e 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 o Jesus Christ, e
Hey everybody, Pastor Stephen Anderson here with Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona to bring you the exciting news that Paul Wittenberger and I have begun production on our next big project. Now, our first three films, After the Tribulation, New World Order Bible Versions, and Marching to Zion, have been great successes. After the Tribulation alone has been viewed over seven million times. And I'm really excited about this new project. I think it's going to be our greatest film yet. It's going to be called Babylon USA. And this film is going to go through everything about the New World Order. It's going to expose people to the idea of a global religion, global government, global financial system. And it's going to be the type of film that you could put in somebody's hand that doesn't know anything about this subject. They haven't really been exposed to the truth movement or know a whole lot about Bible prophecy. And it's going to be just a great first exposure to these subjects. And it's not going to be after the tribulation part two. It's going to cover completely different material than what's in these three films. It's going to be all new material. We're going to be doing a ton of interviews. We've already got some great interviews lined up. We've already shot some great footage. We're going to be talking to historians, pastors, and just all kinds of experts on all manner of subjects uh, in this documentary that's going to be about the New World Order, and it's going to prove that Babylon in Revelation 18 is actually referring to the United States to show how the U.S. has spiritually become Babylon. Now, none of these films would have been possible without people donating and, and helping us with the funding. You know, the reason why these films look so professional is that they do cost a lot of money to make, and we had a lot of people pitch in and help us with the funding on these three films. And now again, we need to ask you to help us out. If you believe in what we're doing, if you love the other three movies, then consider becoming a funding partner and donating to the film by going to BabylonUSAMovie.com. Again, that's BabylonUSAMovie.com. If you decide to donate to the film, you're going to be one of the very first people to see this thing when it's done. And it's going to be awesome. BabylonUSAMovie.com. Bring the exciting news that Paul Woodworth and I have begun production on our next big project. Now, our first three films, After the Tribulation, New World of Bible Versions, and Martin Design, have been great successes. After the Tribulation of Rome has been viewed over seven years time. And I'm really excited about this new project. I think it's going to be our greatest film yet. It's going to be called Babylon USA. And this film is going to go through everything about the New World Order. It's going to expose people to the idea of a global religion, global government, global financial system. And it's going to be kind of film that you can put in somebody's hand that doesn't know anything about this subject. They haven't really been exposed to the truth movement or know a whole lot about how prophecy. And it's going to be just a great first exposure. It's not going to be after the two days of the It's going to cover a completely different material than what's in these three films. It's going to be all new material. We're going to be doing a ton of interviews. We've already got some great interviews to find out there. Now, this is a completely false teaching. This man was just a little tiny church up like, 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 like Calvary Baptist Church. And what he did is he went to the border of the USA and Mexico and he made a big set of cameras all over his car. And he made a big scene and he got right in the face of the custom officers saying, you can't tell me what to do, only God tells me what to do. And what they did is he got so angry, they teased him. They shot tasers at him, they electrocuted him. He started all the film screaming and pain and scars all over his face and stuff. Because all the custom officers went off of him. He got right in their face. We're not to do that as a father of the person. We're to spread the gospel, we're not getting people's faces. And what he did is he put all these videos on YouTube and he became the most popular preacher in the U.S. And he's got thousands and tens of thousands of people sending the money all over America and all over the world. He's very popular. He's preaching a false teaching. The whore, he's saying the whore of Babylon is the U.S.A. It's a lie. It's a complete lie. But he's not the only one. Let's do the biggest 
I was, I think it's the biggest, probably second biggest Bible college in the USA and see what he's doing. Huh. So, uh, in fact, they were worshiping the creator of these guys. And you're going to see this in this next video. But they're worshiping the pastor. They're not worshiping Jesus Christ. They're worshiping the pastor. They're worshiping the singers on the stage. So they're not worshiping Jesus Christ. Now, uh, let's just go... Uh, Oh yeah, and they're filling the churches. This one church has a 40 bus ministry. Buses and 40 buses. Big, big buses that take, you know, probably 50, 60 kids and adults. And buses and then it fills all these churches. Thousands and thousands of people. You know? And he's one of the daughters of the world. A Baptist church. Now, Jesus may have been a Baptist. A lot of Baptist preachers say that. But he certainly wasn't this, about this, this particular group. And let's just look. Video to Jack Howell's Lucifer. Reverend Joe Combs and his wife Evangeline are about to go on trial charged with child abuse, kidnapping, and rape. There ought to be something that you care about that you want God to do. And a lot of the beatings occurred in here where she would be made to stand in a circle. She said uh, one would beat her until that one got tired and then the other one would start beating her. She was beat with ropes, chains, whips, umbrellas, bats, hammers. Joe and Evangeline Combs were arrested in November of 1998. My dad lived a double life. One of a righteous family man and dynamic speaker in the public eye. But one of sordid sexual secrets privately. Secrets that only my siblings and me and my mom knew. It was it was craziness, living one way, preaching another. Lay aside the sin which does so easily beset you. And that means you can't run the race for God if you've got sin unconfessed in your life. The church deacon says his pastor stole his wife. He lusted after her. He says the pastor controlled his life for years, forcing him to sleep in his basement. The pastor denies it. He has harsh words for the retired deacon. A fellow who would allow an outsider to send him to the basement to be a wimp. Thy deacon's wife. We love you, We'll just pretend about Fine. it. This is the <laughs> boomerang. Yes. We can't sure. see you back here. What? We can't oh, see you. You're too short. We can't see you. You're too short. You're beautiful. It's worth it, isn't it? You look the same. Haven't changed since a while ago. No. <laughs> Thank you, girls. Yes, sir. Yeah. Where's everybody been this morning? This is the only group that's come. Well, they don't love you they anymore. They just love you like we do. We don't love you anymore. They don't love you as much as we do. We're the only ones. We got boyfriends house. now. Yeah. Oh, all the last. Well, because you know, you know, you're the best one taken, and so they had to go get the second fast. I don't like them like this anymore. Unfortunately. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Love you. Someone's got to be a son of thunder, waiting for the touch of God, the channeling of God. Is thunder, waiting for the touch. Oh, that hurts! Oh, oh God, I'm so tired! Oh God, I, I didn't want to lose her! Oh God, I, I didn't want to have that pain! Oh God, no, no! Oh, oh. oh you love me so much, don't you? Yes. It is a 12-year prison sentence for the former pastor of a Northwest Indiana church, Jack Scopp admitted he had a sexual relationship with an underage girl. I'm Bob Gray. I'm in Italy, Texas. I happen to be at the monument that was erected in Dr. Howe's hometown in his memory.
I gotta tell you, the money part of it was pretty nice. As a kid, I mean, think about it. Tithes and offerings from 50,000 people? Hello? <laughs> it created a lavish lifestyle for our family. My father owned most of the city <laughs> where the church was. He owned a college, two high schools, two grade schools, a cemetery, lots of buildings. He was very wealthy. And even into our adult years, he owned us. He owned our homes, our cars, our furniture. He owned our lives. And we didn't dare cross him because we were too afraid we'd lose everything. He died a multimillionaire. He left nothing to his children. He left everything to the organization. I'm 73 years old right now. You'd be amazed what's going on. I'm right in the middle of a $4 million building program. I'm about, I, I just bought a, a, a charismatic church. I just bought a hotel. I just bought a vacant lot. Our church is about to enter into a $4 million building program. I'm about to start two more schools. I don't know what they are. I just want to start a couple of schools, that's all. I don't know what they are, but bless God, at 73, I've never been as happy. I've never enjoyed pension as much as I enjoy it now. You could have chosen a college. <clears throat> many, many things we do not have. We have no government support. We have no denominational support. All we do is barely pay the bills. I came across that two-syllable word, money. I like that. And then I came across those three-syllable words because I said, I'm going to have to better my education if I run around Dr. Jack Howells. It's the three syllables. And I liked it. I got a check one day. It says, deal by the end college here, the student body sitting before you here, the staff and faculty administrators and a few friends around the country have pooled their resources in the last few days have raised $70,000 for your 70th birthday. <laughs> Students, those are three armed guards. Don't you try to touch that money. Uh, we have a wheelbarrow full of cash for you. Bring it right on up here. That is $70,000 of real cash. Miles Anderson College, I often say, is not a college, it's an army. Our students are not students, they're soldiers. Our faculty is not a faculty, they're sergeants and trainers. Training an army to reach America for the gospel of Christ and to save our country, that isn't all. Miles Anderson College is not only an army, it's a family. I'm not the chancellor, I'm the father. 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 I'm the father.
Can you imagine? Whoa. Yeah, this goes on. They brought me wheelbarrows. I talk about wheelbarrows of money. They brought me wheelbarrows of money. Tens and tens of thousands of dollars. Over a hundred thousand dollars. Just for his birthday. They rolled that up on stage with armed guards and security in a British armor truck. Just ridiculous. The love of money. So, uh, there's no repentance here. So let's go and see what God says. Romans 1.25. Uh, I might not have time to go Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever? Amen. We're all worshiping the creature, the pastor. You see? We've got to be careful, guys. We've got to stick to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Pastor Gaines preaches the words of God. So we're very fortunate to have a good pastor. You know, so, what is the end of this Roman Catholic Church war? Well, you see, these churches are preaching the lovey dovey gospel. You go to any church here in Suriname, well, this is how they come, love, love. First ten minutes is meeting, greeting, everyone walking around shaking hands. Loving, the gospel. What is the love of God? You know what God's love is. To love is to rebuke and chasten. God's going to punish you when you do something wrong. You've got to be convicted of your sin. These guys don't convict you of your sins. So, your sins are going to be taken care of. So, that's what Christ died on the cross for us. But yet, all these churches are bypassing repentance and sin. They're bypassing what they need. The pastor needs to instill in you. You know, you got sin, you got to take care of that sin. If you don't take care of that sin, you're not going to know God. You will know a God. But not the God. But he's grand rising from Jacob. Take care of that sin. So, one hour she be shall be made desolate. That's what the, 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 the verse 20 said. In uh, Revelation 18, 20. In one, hour, in one hour, three old scriptures said, in one hour she should become desolate. So what should God's children be doing? What should we be doing, guys? What should we all be doing? Praying for the world? All these churches, they go down by the obelisk or the water can. Let's all get together for a day of prayer. How can, how can you pray with the unclean? How can you pray for them? We're not to do that. What does what the scripture say? Okay. Uh, partying with the world and friends of the heart and getting all religions together for a day of prayer. No, no, no. We are, we and her Baptist daughters, you know, the back end of all these churches, including the charismatic and her Baptist daughters, that left or changed God's prayer words will be destroyed. They will all go down the back end. Bang! And that one hour, they're all going to be gone. You don't want to be in those church buildings when that happens. They call themselves houses of God. You watch what houses they are. They're going to be destroyed. And let's go to 2 Corinthians 6, 17 and see what God says to do about all this. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Therefore come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. See how unclean that video was? A Baptist church in hell. So we need to rejoice when these wicked people of the word that want to take them out. We need to rejoice because that's what the scripture tells us to do. People think they're crazy rejoicing over her. We're going to rejoice over her. And that was in uh, verse 20. Rejoice over her. Uh, Revelation 18, 20. Thou heaven, any holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Now I showed you guys a video a few weeks back. And I had to go back there. Something kept, you know, nudging me. Go back there. Look again. Look again. And it was about how the charismatic churches and the Protestants came one with the Catholics. They, they made a covenant. And uh, because I knew, I, I heard something and I missed it. And I just knew that. Something my spirit told me, go back there, look in. So I went back on up for you guys, and I made a video three, Copeland, all tongues. So this is the biggest complex of all these ministers. <coughs> and notice, notice what he's doing with the speaking tongues. For this for the Catholic Church and for the Pope. According to Scripture, when we know not how to pray as we ought, we pray for him in the Spirit. We receive utterance in the Holy Ghost. We receive prayers of faith. We receive, sir, we receive words that are not our own. La del go plumo min on teleaschepe. Ve folo puma mama e tel clemen kido. Ko polo mai a tale endole kumo meste 
Shtelu klofaj, klebo le kamana. Bramande e kiri ko po më mblesh në boshkire, të le kjetë o le kamba glenina, ma klo më hala largero në levenu, bretë o shtesh kimane të elo. Kerebana, kerebana, pala ku më pële kitu kële shtindu dhe u kële kava. Shte kële afore dhe ati kële kjele ku më kële raga. What does it say? First, now let's say those were real tongues, which are real languages of Europe, tongues are languages of Europe. Let's say those are real, which are not, because I didn't hear one language of Europe in there. I've been through many translators and there's nothing in there that's a language of Europe. So let's say they are real tongues. How are real tongues to be performed in the church? When, when Brother Miguel comes up and speaks in French, I stand beside him, I translate in English. That's how tongues are handled in scripture. It's always a translator. Always. Now all those people were speaking together, together at the same time in all their own little prayer languages. It's total confusion. That's not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is self-control. So 1 Corinthians 14, 27. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, and those definitely were unknown tongues, but they weren't the tongues of Bible talks about, which are first languages of the earth. Let it be by two, or at the very most by three. Was there more than two or three people there? Or were they all going out with gibberish? There was a lot more than two or three people there. Speaking in tongues. And by their course. And let one interpret. Was there an interpreter there? No. It's not a God. Not a God. So, now, now, in this video, Copeland admits where he can, in the next video, I'm going to show you Copeland admits where he can come from. You're going to hear it. And who his father is. And I missed that when I showed you guys the video the first time, but today you're going to see it. I slowed it down. And let's go to video four, my L. Praise God. God's will be done. Amen. Yeah. Tony, thank you, sir. My how you bless this place tonight. God's will be done. Amen. Yeah. Tony, thank you, sir. My, how you bless this place tonight. So, my, how you bless this place. This time we're supposed to be blessed. Be blessed. You heard it here in Panama. You go to church. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed with what? Be blessed with what? Go on. Show me the scripture. Be blessed with what? Be blessed with hell. The Father. Careful, guys. Careful. Now, let's go and see Satan's mark on the this man. This, boy, I had to slow the whole video down. It took me hours, but I found it. Now, let's go to video five. Thank you. We showed this part uh, a few weeks ago, but I just narrowed it down. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.